All right, we have Math 2, Unit 8 Practice Test. This is the solutions. I'll work through the entire practice test uh, one problem at a time. So first we have uh, simplify each expression using only positive exponents and or rational numbers. All right, so basically we want to convert these to uh, fractional exponents. So this becomes, I take the base, the exponent of the base is the numerator and the root is the denominator. So this becomes x to the 2 fifths. And that is converting radical numbers or radicals to fractional exponents. All right, so this one we're going to take the base, 25, the numerator is our exponent and the denominator is our radical. So basically we have the square root of 25 to the third, which we could rewrite as 25 times 25 times 25. And of course we know there's two fives in each 25. So one gets out, one gets killed, one gets out, one gets killed, one gets out, one gets killed. So basically we have three fives that get out. And when we multiply them together, we end up with 125. Okay, moving on to number three. Again, we have 64 squared, and we're looking for the third root. So the third root of 64 squared, well, that means 64 times 64, and you should know that 64 is actually 4 times 4 times 4. And of course, since we're looking for the third root, one gets out, two gets killed, one gets out, two gets killed. And so we have two fours getting out, which means four times four is 16. All right, moving on. Um, we can use elimination method here or uh, subtraction method. So elimination method would simply be, I'm sorry, subtraction method would be simply when you divide the same base, you subtract exponents. So this would be five, x to the 5 minus 1. And then y to the negative 7 minus negative 3, which gives us x to the 4th, y when we add the opposite to the negative 4th. And now because we can't have any negative exponents, this becomes x to the 4th over y to the 4th. Now, just do it one other way real quickly. If you want to get rid of negative exponents first, you would simply rewrite this as x to the fifth, and then the y to the negative seven goes to the bottom and becomes positive. And then the x on the bottom, we're just going to leave it there because it's positive, and y to the negative three goes to the top and becomes positive. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're simply going to do elimination method. I'm going to eliminate 1x off the bottom and 1x off the top, leaving x to the fourth on top. If I eliminate 3 off the y's off the top and I eliminate 3 y's off the bottom, I'm left with 4 y's. So that's where we end up with x to the fourth over y to the fourth. Okay, all right, moving on. Number 5. Well, first thing, we, we're raising a power to a power here. So what we want to rewrite this as 5a to the 11th, b to the 3rd, and then negative 2 squared is 4a to the 5 times 2, a to the 10th. Okay, we can leave that in parentheses. Times negative 3, a to the 1st, b to the 1st. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to multiply 5 times 4 is 20 times negative 3 is negative 60. Okay, we've taken care of those three. Now, a to the 11th times a to the 10th times a to the 1st, we add exponents. 11 plus 10 is 21, plus 1 is 22. So we get a to the 22nd. Finally, b to the 3rd times b to the 1st is b to the 4th, 3 plus 1. Okay, moving on to number 6. You can see we have in parentheses, we have negative 6p to the third, q to the six to the zero power. Well, this is a little bit of a trick. Anything to the zero power equals one. So we basically end up with negative 7pqr to the fourth times one. 
which is just negative 7 pqr to the fourth. Here we're just trying to get you to understand that anything to the zero power equals 1. All right, moving on to number 7. We have a to the fourth, b to the sixth, raised to the third power. When we raise an exponent to an exponent, we multiply. It's almost like distributing. a to the fourth becomes a to the four times three, or a to the twelfth. And b to the sixth raised to the third is b to the eighteenth. All right, moving on. So what we end up here is we basically have negative 4 to the first power and 1 times 3 is 3 so we end up with negative 4 to the third power then it's x to the 5 times 3 15th and y to the sixth well negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 is negative 64 so our final answer is negative 64 x to the 15th y to the sixth all right moving on all right, so a negative exponent virtually means reciprocal. So what we do is we take the reciprocal of this, what's inside the parentheses, q to the seventh goes to the top, 4p to the fourth goes to the bottom, and then that negative exponent just becomes positive. So now we're raising everything on the inside to the third power. So that means q to the seventh raised to the third is q to the 21st, over p, excuse me, either over 4 to the 3rd, p to the 12th. 4 to the 3rd is 4 times 4 times 4, which we already know is 64. So we get q to the 21st over 64, p to the 12th. All right, number 10. Again, we're multiplying. So the 5, a to the 8th, b to the 3rd is not going to change times b to the fourth, which does not change. But we have negative 6 squared, which is positive 36, and then a to the negative 6 raised to the second is negative 12. Okay? So now we're going to go 5, that print's in there, 5 times 36 is 150, 180. Okay, got that taken care of. And now a to the eighth, um, times a to the negative 12, well, that's a to the 8 minus 12, which is a to the negative 4, which means it's going to have to go to the bottom and become positive. And then we have, so we have the 180, I don't want to forget that. And then we have a to the negative 4 means go to the bottom and become positive. So we took care of the a's. And now finally, b to the 3rd times b to the 4th is b to the 7th. So we end up with 180 b to the seventh over a to the fourth. Didn't want to write it that way, but that's how it's going to end up. All right, moving on to number 11. Well, again, two ways to do this. So I think uh, I'll go ahead and do it this way this time. First of all, whenever I see all these negative exponents, I just put my division bar. Now I can see that 3 goes into 3 once, and 3 goes into 21 seven times. All right, a to the fifth is unchanged, b to the second is unchanged, but this c to the negative 2, I'm going to put it on the bottom and make it positive. I went all the way across, now I come back, a to the second is going to go to the top and become positive. I should say a to the negative 2 goes to the top and becomes positive. b to the seventh is going to stay home. And c to the negative ninth is going to go to the top and become positive. And now elimination method. So let's see what I got here. The 7 is going to stay there. a to the 5th and a to the 2nd multiply give me a to the 7th. I got those taken care of. All right, I got two b's on top. I got 7 on the bottom. I'm going to cancel the 2 off the top, which means I have to cancel 2 off the bottom, which leaves 5. I got nine C's on top, and I got two C's on the bottom. I'm going to cancel two off the bottom and two off the top, leaving seven on top. So my final answer is seven, A to the seventh, C to the seventh, all over B to the fifth. All right, last one. Guys, these are not difficult. You just have to take your time. All right. 
So first thing, I want to rewrite this. I want to distribute that 4. So this m squared raised to the 4th is m to the 8th. n to the negative 1 raised to the 4th is n to the negative 4th. Okay, so now probably the easiest thing to do here is to multiply the same base, add exponents. So m to the negative 5 times m to the 8th is m to the 3rd. Negative 5 plus 8 is 3. And n to the 3rd raised to the negative, or excuse me, n to the 3rd times n to the negative 4. 3 plus negative 4 is negative 1. And we can't end with a negative exponent, so we rewrite this as m to the 3rd over n to the 1st. If you have a negative exponent, it goes to the bottom and becomes positive. Okay, moving on to the second page. All right, so in this, we need to get rid of these um, radicals. So if you want to think about this, um, first I'm going to put this in parentheses and think of it as to the first. So when I rewrite this, I'm going to rewrite it as x to the three-fifths raised to the first power. But remember, this is our numerator, that's our denominator. So it becomes x to the three-fifths raised to the one-sixth. When we raise a power to a power, we multiply. So this becomes x to the 3 times 1, which is 3. 5 times 6 is 30. We have x to the 3 thirtieths, which reduces to x to the 1 tenth. And that is b. All right, moving on to, uh, let's leave it up there so you can see that one. Move on to 14. All right, we have to rewrite this as 7 to the 3 tenths times, that's that little dot right there, times 7 to the 3 fifths. When we multiply the same base, we add exponents, so this becomes 7 to the 3 tenths plus 3 fifths. If we're going to add these exponents, we have to have a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply 3 times 2 and ten, 5 times 2 to get 6 tenths. And now we can say that this whole thing is, let's go up here, 7 to the 3 plus 6, 9 tenths. And that looks like it is A. Okay, moving on to number 15. Select an ex equivalent expression. All right, so this is 2 to the 6th, because 1 times 6 is 6 and x to the one-half raised to the third one-half times six is three, and basically two to the six is two times two times two times two times two. That's four, eight, 16, 32, 64. x to the third, c. All right, moving on to number 16. All right, again, we need to rewrite this as seven to the two-thirds, divided by 7 to the 3 sixths. Whenever you divide the same base, you subtract exponents. So this becomes 7 to the 2 thirds minus 3 sixths. If we are going to subtract these, we have to convert these to common denominators. So I'll multiply 2 times 2 and get 4, and 3 times 2 and get 6. So now we have 7 to the 4 sixths minus 3 sixths, which is 7 to the 1 sixth, which is D. Okay, moving on to number 17. Simplify and express the answers in radical form. Okay, multiplying the same base, this is 11 to the, we need a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 5 and get 5 fifteenths times 11, multiply top and bottom by 3, oops, 5 fifteenths times 11 to the 9 fifteenths, which we can say is, let's do it up here, 11 to the 5 fifteenths plus 9 fifteenths, which is 11 to the 14 fifteenths. Double check that, 5 fifteenths and 9 fifteenths, 5 fifteenths, 5 plus 9 is 14, there you go. 
All right, again, if we're going to multiply this, we're going to change this to 5 to the, let's go 5 twentieths times 5 to the 8 twentieths, which gives us 5 to the 13 twentieths. Always reduce if you can. Okay, let's go on to the third page. All right. So, number 20, nope, number 18, you go down a little further. All right, so we're trying to find the numerator. So we change this to 18 to the 3 fourths numerator denominator times 18 to the 6 fourths, which gives us 18 to the 3 plus 6 is 9 fourths. So we can see that x equals 9. All right, so again, we've got to put this guy in parentheses. So this becomes 6 to the 1 half to the 1 seventh. And when you raise a power to a power, you multiply. So this becomes 6 to the 1 14th. And the denominator is 14, so x equals 14. Okay, moving on to number 20. All right, we're going to convert these two, so this becomes 12 to the 3 fifths times 12 to the 8 fifths, and which gives us 12 to the 11 fifths, so x equals 11. All right, moving on to 21, we have 4 to the 9 fourths times 4 to the 1 fourth which means 4 to the 9 fourths plus 1 fourth, which is, uh, we'll keep going here, 4 to the 10 fourths, which, uh, let's see here, 9 fourths, 10 fourths. Ah, so this is a little bit trickier. So what we have to do here is we're looking at 2. Well, 2, 4 is actually equal to 2 squared. So if we change this, to, instead of 4, we literally just change 4 to 2 hat, two squared. What we end up with is 2 times 10 is 20. So this is 2 to the 20 fourths, which we know that 20 divided by 4 is 5. So this becomes 2 to the 5th. So x equals 5. That's a little bit of a tricky one there. Okay. I probably should have looked over here first and saw and made that change right away. Would have made it a little bit less work, but still the same conclusion. Okay, number 22. Well, we can rewrite this as 4 plus 11 root 5 plus 3 minus 1 root 5. So 4 plus 3 is 7. And 11 root 5 minus 1 root 5 is simply 10 root 5. Okay, moving on to number 23. We'll rewrite this as 8 plus 11 root 13. And then we have to negative times a positive is a negative 5. And a negative times a negative is a positive 4 root 13. So now we have 8 minus 5, which is 3. And 10 root 13 plus 4 root 13 is 14 root 13. Okay, now we have to state whether it's rational or irrational in this group here. So if you have 5 root 13 minus 7 root 13 is negative 2 root 13, and this is irrational because of the root 13. Okay, over here, we have 4 root 11 plus 7 root 11. That, not, that cannot be simplified any further, so it's just irrational. Okay, now we, moving on to C. We don't need the parentheses, so we can pretend they're not there. So 3 plus 4 is 7, and 6 root 17 plus 2 root 17 is 8 root 17, which is irrational. Okay, well, the square root of 9 is 3, and 3 times 14 is 42, and that is a rational number. All right, 5 root 3 times 2 root 3, 5 times 2 is 10. Square root 3 times square root 3 is square root 9, which square root 9 is 3, so our final answer is 30. 
5 times 2 is 10. Square root 3 times square root 3 is just 3. And 3 times 10 is 30, which is a rational number. All right, finally, we have negative 2 root 5 times 7 root 3. Well, what we get is negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. And square root 5 times square root 3 is you literally just put them both under the same roof and multiply. So we get negative 14 square root 15. That cannot be simplified. So that is our final answer, or simplified, and it's irrational. All right, moving on to the last page. These are always kind of tricky ones. What we want to do is make all of these, if possible, look like that. So what we have to do is, you'll notice on this one, x to the 7 fourths already match up. So can we make 27 to the 2 thirds match up with 9? Well, this becomes 27 squared to the third root. Well, this is the third root of 27 times 27, and we know 27 is 3, 3. So 1, 3 gets out there, and then for the second one, 1, 3 gets out, and 3 times 3 is 9. So we end up with 9x to the 7 fourths, so that's a yes. Okay, here the 9 is unchanged, and we rewrite x to the 7 fourths, so that's a yes as well. Here, we can't change that 27. Nothing happens there. This is already matching up, but we can't change that 27, so that's a no. Okay, so this one is basically 9 to the first times x to the 3 fourths. Okay, 3 fourths, and if we change if we change x to the first to x to the four fourths times x to the three fourths, we end up with nine to the seven fourths. So that's a yes as well. Four plus three is seven. Okay, and finally, if we redid this, we rewrote this, it would really be nine to the one fourth x to the seven fourths and 9 to the 1 fourth does not equal 9, so that's a no. All right, number 26. Determine three equivalent expressions for a to the negative 20 in the form a to the n times n. So this one's really pretty easy. It can be a to the negative 2 raised to the 10th. It could be a to the negative 4 raised to the 5th, or it could be a to the negative 10 raised to the 2nd all kinds of possibilities there. All right, determine three equivalent expressions for a to the 24th in the form. So again, simply a squared to the 12th, a to the 4th raised to the 6th, and let's just continue on, a to the 8th raised to the 3rd. As long as 2 times 12 is 24, 4 times 6 is 24, and 8 times 3 is 24. All right, last section here. So we're trying to make all of these guys look like this. So the 8 is already there. And if we rewrite this, it's x to the 6 thirds, which is not 5 thirds. So that's a no. All right, 32 to the 5th. All right, well, 32, I'm sorry, to the 5th the root of 32 to the 3rd. Well, the 5th root of 32 is 2, and there's 3 32. So literally, 3 twos get out which equals 8, and then we already have x to the 5 thirds, so that's a yes. All right, this guy could be rewritten as 8 to the 1 third, that's just 1 third, x to the 5 thirds. x to the 1 third does not equal 8, or 8 to the 1 third does not equal 8, so that's a no. All right, so this is literally the square root of 64. That means square root, and the square root of 64 is 8. x to the 5 thirds is good, so that's a yes. All right, and finally we have 8x to the first times x to the 2 thirds, and if we rewrite this as 8 to the 3 thirds times, I'm sorry, 8x to the 3 thirds times x to the 2 thirds, we end up with 8 to the 5x to the 5 thirds, sorry, I keep leaving that x out of there, 
And so that is a yes as well. Okay, so there's all your solutions to your practice test. Hopefully that helps you prepare for the test tomorrow.